Let's do this. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is you're watching this video. Thank you so much for clicking on my channel today. So this is part two of my series of the best and worst makeup that I used in 2018. So hopefully this will be going up very soon here. So basically before the middle of January, head and roll right into it. So during this part two, I'm basically gonna cover all face makeup I used in 2018. If you missed part one, I went over all eyeshadow palettes, individual eyeshadows, basically eye products that I used in 2018, the best and the worst. You can check that out. I'll put the link down below. Um, but let's get rolling to this one. Thank you again for joining me. Start with foundation. Woo-wee. All right, so with foundation, let me, what should I go with? I'm gonna go with, uh, so I'm gonna go bad, good, bad, good. I'm gonna try to stay in that order. All right, so this is foundation that was all the rave at the end of 17 and through 2018. I heard a lot of people talk about it. It is the Superstay Maybelline 24 hour foundation. People were, here it is. So people were comparing this baby here to the Huda Beauty foundation that came out in 17 as well. And I tried the Huda Beauty and I liked it, but it didn't really, eh, it was okay. Um, I ended up getting rid of it. I didn't keep it. And then with this Maybelline um, 24 hour foundation, it was so, so, so terribly drying on my skin. Um, I do have dry skin, so it's not combo skin. It's not anything. It is dry skin. So, um, this might work if you have oilier skin or even combo skin. I think I've heard people rave about it with combo skin. So it might work for some people out there. Obviously it just didn't work for me. It Moving right along. All right. I had put this down for a while and I think I forgot to use it for quite a while and then I started using it a lot recently again and I just remembered how much I love this foundation. Whoa! This baby right here. If you have dry skin, if you don't like things looking too, too matte, this baby is amazing. This is the Josie Moran Vibrancy Foundation, and I love this thing so much. Um, it was the only foundation I took with me on my honeymoon. It's, and that was summer, and it was blistering hot, blistering hot, sweating profusely out there the whole time, and I, it stayed put. Um, and it's a very dewy finish foundation. Um, it does not feel heavy, but it has good coverage. It's just amazing. And it's supposed to have really, really, really good skin benefits for you too. So weird, but for me, if I'm going to spend money on skincare, it's going to be skincare. You know what I mean? If I'm going to spend money on makeup, it's going to be on makeup. Mixing the two, I haven't found too many products that mix them well enough, I think is what it is. Um, this does it. So if this truly does have skin benefits, which it's supposed to, then great. I love it even more, but I love this thing even with or without the skin benefits. I love it. I love the way it lays. I love the way it looks. I love the way my skin feels in it. Um, amazing foundation. Oh, and by the way, in case you want to know my color, if you're like, I think I'm her color-ish, maybe kind of, sort of, because I know I do that to people, it is uh, Awakened. So this is Awakened from Joyce Moran. I love it. Right. Another disappointment, and this one was a disappointment and a shocker to me because I fully anticipated to love this foundation. So this is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Cushion Foundation. I got this in W4. That's um, the color I use in the liquid form of the True Match Foundation, which by the way, is one of my all time favorite uh, drugstore foundation. So I had heard great things about this L'Oreal Cushion Foundation 
and honestly, it just didn't work on me. It looked fine on first application, but it has very, very little coverage in my opinion. So that's one. And two, every single time I wore it without like, without a doubt, no matter how I set it, no matter, no matter what I did, every time I wore this foundation, I would end up with patches by the end of the day. Like some areas faded really bad, other areas did not fade at all, and I look like a hot mess every time I try to wear this L'Oreal foundation. So as much as I love the original True Match, the liquid format and the little glass bottle, this one, not so much. It's going in the trash and it's like, it's full. Oh, I feel bad trashing it. I don't know, maybe someone else, maybe it'll work on someone else. My Hourglass, I've mentioned this I think in other videos. I love, love, love this foundation. I had originally bought this foundation a few years ago for my wedding. I loved it then, I still love it now. It's a great foundation. I am in the color Nude, my winter color, so it is um, perfect for like my light skinner. So maybe like January through March or so. Um, but I loved, love, love this foundation. It really stays well, it has great coverage. I mean, if you're looking for full coverage, this thing has full coverage, but I never, I honestly, I've accidentally put on way too much and it still doesn't look cakey. I don't know how they do it. It's amazing. And I will never stop using this foundation as long as it exists. I really, really, really wanted to like it was this Stila Aqua Glow Serum Foundation. So, this foundation I thought was going to be kind of like the Josie Moran one, but although at first application they are kind of similar, uh, this one doesn't have as much coverage and it doesn't sit as nice, it doesn't wear as nice, and also started fading on me pretty darn quickly. I tried it a few times. Um, at some point, I think I layered it like a ton and it did end up looking kind of cakey and weird. Um, I just really wasn't a fan. I'm gonna play with it a little bit more because I've only had it for a couple of months. Um, I'm gonna see if I can mix it with other foundations and if together it makes a good combo, maybe making a more matte foundation, not as matte, something like that I think might work with it, but on its own, I didn't like this Stila Aqua Glow uh, foundation serum. It just didn't work out well. That I loved and then just kind of liked and now I'm kind of over it, but it is a good foundation. I think it's a good foundation. Is the Too Faced Born This Way. So it's supposed to be medium to full coverage. It's pretty darn full coverage. So it's the Born This Way foundation. Of course, this is nothing new to the market, but, um, I just was trying it this year for the first time. It is an oil-free foundation, but it is not too drying on my dry skin. It actually sits really well. It feels good. I don't have to worry about it sitting too dry or anything like that. And it gives me really good coverage. I actually don't have anything bad to say about it. I just think I like my Josie Moran and a few others more. My color is Warm Nude. This is not really a dislike but it's not a love and I'm still playing with it. Nicole, this thing is thick. I mean, thick. Problem number one is that it's just not my right color and it's really, really hard to gauge your color and I haven't found it anywhere except for online. So, um, what color did I get here? I think it's color 223. Um, so these numbers, I think it's color 223. I don't know how to even describe it. So it's a um, it's a cream foundation. I mean, look how slowly that comes up. This thing is so thick and it's way too dark for me, I'm realizing, especially right now. But if you want coverage, it's going to give you coverage. Um, so it's great to spot conceal with. Um, I was using it a lot right here where I have, uh, what are those called? Sunspots? Sunspots. 
So I have a lot of sunspots right here. So I was using it to try to cover those and it actually did work really well, but it just wasn't my foundation color. And I think it's too thick to use as an overall foundation, but for spot coverage, or maybe again to mix it into a foundation that maybe has less coverage, it might work really well. I have two foundations left and I love them both. So I'll just run through them real quick. Up for Ever Ultra HD foundation stick. So this is this baby here. I love this foundation. Love, 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 love. Um, leaves a slightly dewier finish than the Hourglass, and I actually like it better than the Hourglass. I was on the fence. I wasn't sure which one I liked more, but I think when it comes down to it, I like the Makeup Forever one a little bit more than my Hourglass one, but I would consider both of these my Holy Grail foundations. Love them. And same thing, as long as they make it, I will never stop buying it. And I am in color 123 or Y365. Another one I tried this year that I actually ended up really liking, um, the It Cosmetics CC Your Skin But Better. I believe it's the original one. It's this one here in the silver tube. I am in the color medium and I like it a lot. I think it works really well. I used it a lot during summertime. It gave me that perfect medium coverage and I really, really enjoyed using it. We're done it. with the foundations. Woo! All right, moving right along. Let's go to concealers. You guys know I am a concealer girl. I need me concealer. I need a good concealer. I need it. Not only do I like it, do I want it, I literally need it. Cause these eyes without concealer, mm. Oh man. Mm -hmm. oh. Of course there's an airplane flying right now. Why wouldn't there be? That, no, I don't need to film right now. I have all day. Concealers. My concealer song. You like? All right, so for concealers, a lot of them that I just did not like this year. So I tried a bunch and um, here we go. Let's just do it. Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. This baby here, why do I have two of them? Because I tried two different colors. Because I thought maybe it was the color that was throwing me off. It wasn't. Um, it was being raved about and people were comparing it to Shape Tape and honestly, I just don't see it. I didn't, I'm not a fan. Um, I wish I was. I wholeheartedly wish I was because if I believed it was as good as Shape Tape, I would be so happy because this is half the price. This would be like holy grail, holy smokes, yes, yes, yes but it wasn't. So I actually use them a lot just to prime my eyelids. Just because I don't want to let them go to waste and concealer is one of those things. It's a Dolfa applicator so it's easy to get germy if you will and it goes really close to your eyes and I don't think it's a product that you necessarily should share. So I don't want to give it away but it wasn't bad enough to throw in the trash. I have a really hard time with throwing things in the trash. I'll just, I, I know that just so you know that. Um, so I've been using it to like prime my so eyelids. this isn't a concealer. Um, I was using it as a corrector and I am actually shocked that I ended up loving it as a corrector. It's the Maybelline Dream Brightening Creamy Concealer in the shade Deep. So clearly there's no way this would be a highlighting shade or a concealer shade for me because concealer shades usually are neutralizing the darkness um, and brightening the under eye where this would do neither because of the shade of it. But I loved how well it corrected my dark circles. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, I ran out. I never run out of products because I have so much stuff that I alternate between that I rarely run out that quickly and I ran out of this in a couple of months which means I was using it on a daily so yeah I liked it. A product that I rebought, and it just something has changed I don't know what 
but this is the NYX Incredible Waterproof Concealer. So I would always get it in this like yellow tone. Here we go. I used to get this all the time. I rebought it this year just because I found it somewhere and I was like, oh yeah, I'll pick it up, why not? I don't know, it just, it did nothing. It was a little drying on my under eyes and it just didn't really conceal. So, these babies nope. out of the way because we don't need to spend a lot of time. Shape Tape Concealer. Shape Tape Concealer. I don't think this will ever not be my favorite. I love this thing so, so much. I have, these are the ones that are almost out um, and I have two others on deck. That's all I have to say about the Shape Tape Concealer. Clearly, I'm... Products I've changed my mind on, again. I rebought the MAC Pro Longwear Conceal. This one, I rebought it. I rebought it about a year ago. It's barely been used because the very first time I used it, it made my under eyes so dry. My eyes, my under eyes have not looked that crepey and cracky and disgusting in a very long time. So, uh, needless to say, the Smack Pro Longwear did not work out for me. Um, it used to work nicely, I believe, or else I wouldn't have rebought it. Um, but that was over 10 years ago, and clearly maybe my skin has changed. My under eyes have gotten drier and drier and drier as I've gotten older. Um, so this doesn't work for me anymore. And again, I've been using this a lot to prep the eyelid because it does go on well as an eyeshadow base. New favorites? That sounded weird and there was a reason. Cause so I'm not, like some days I love this concealer and some days I'm not sure. So um, it's, yeah. So this is the Tarte Creaseless Conceal. It has a very dewy finish and it feels fantastic under the eyes and it looks good and it makes my under eyes look alive. You know, like I don't feel like it looks like I'm wearing makeup. Like it looks really nice. It makes the makeup look very fresh under the eyes. But sometimes I feel like it's too dewy and when my dark circles are just out of control, I feel like it attracts more attention to the under eye than necessary. So that's, the pro and the con about it. But I think if I lightly powder underneath it, that's ideal. But we'll get into the whole powder situation in just a moment and I'll explain to you why that's been a dilemma for me. But I think if I find the perfect under eye powder, then this concealer is going to be like an ultimate favorite. It might even kind of bump shape tape out of the way because it feels so nice. Clean Fit Me Concealer. I have two shades here. I tried them. I really, really tried them. I had heard such great things. And again, the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation is one of my favorites. So I really, really thought these were gonna be amazing. They're not terrible. They're just not, they're fine. You know, like I'll use them on a no circles are out of control and I gotta go to the gym and I'm not, gonna put makeup on for the gym, but maybe just a little coverage of the darkness under my eyes. Like, that's what I use it for because I just wanna go through it because I don't wanna throw it away. This is another kind of one that I'm on the fence about. This is my LA Girl Pro Conceal in yellow. Actually, is this, yeah, this is yellow. So I loved this thing for a very, very long time. I mean, love, 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 love this thing. Um, and the last couple times I used it to film, I got done filming and I looked at the footage and I didn't like how my under eyes looked. And I don't know if something has changed, just, or if the concealers I've tried this year have been so much better than what I used to use that it, it doesn't look right anymore. I'm not sure. An oldie but goodie. So. This Laura Mercier High Coverage Concealer for the Under Eye. It's a very straightforward name, I suppose. This thing is so old and it still works. Like, I should throw this away. I'm sure it's past its shelf life. Wow, it is way past its shelf life. But it still covers so well and it works so well and it is thick as 
balls. I don't know. Like, it is thick and it does the job and I'm going to go out and repurchase this again this next year and hopefully it's not like other things I repurchased this year that I didn't like. Hopefully I love it just the same. So, um, still one of my favorites. Is not a concealer but a corrector. This is the, I think this was, oh, I can't even read the name. I shouldn't even mention this because I can't read the name. Oh, sorry. Here it is. <laughs> This is the City Color Photo Finish Dark Spot Corrector. So it's peach in tone. Let's see if I can, you guys see that? So it's very peachy and it really, really, really neutralizes the darkness underneath my eyes. We're down to the nitty gritty. This is my ColourPop No Filter Conceal in the shade 30 and plain and simple. I didn't like it and this one did make my eyes crepey and it creasy and I didn't like it. It didn't work and that's all I have to say about that. Next. Oh, Maybelline Rewind. This Maybelline Rewind has gone from I love it to it's okay to I love it to it's okay to I love it to it. So I don't know if it just depends on how dark how bad my dark circles were on the day I used it, whether I loved it or just felt kind of ant about it. But I did finish it and I have full intentions of rebuying it because I think I like it. Is that even a review? These reviews suck. Anyway, but not least is the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. So this came out in 2018, I believe, or it was revamped in 2018 in the color 2W. I actually really, really like this concealer. I really, really do, but it's a little bit too light. So I think I have to color correct first, then conceal on top, and then it works wonderfully in this shade. But if I were to rebuy it again, or if I just repurchase it this year to kind of mix together, I would go with one shade darker. So yeah, but I really uh, do like the formula of the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion. Yay, that is all the concealers. Okay, let me save you all time by telling you that every single powder I tried this year for the first time, that's a lie. That only one powder that I tried this year <laughs> for the first time worked out. Um, the rest of these, I didn't necessarily try this year for the first time, but I used them a lot this past year. And every time, it just didn't really work. Again, I have very dry skin. I am still in search for the perfect powder. So, the uh, Maybelline Fit Me Powder, I got this in light medium because the one darker just felt like it was too dark. It, uh, I just, it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good, it didn't really look good, it did nothing for me. I don't like using, um, really, I don't really like using powders with color in them, so I don't know why I did that, but it was, eh, I didn't like it. RCMA, I can still use this to kind of slightly dust all over very, very lightly. I cannot use it under the eyes. It, 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 it's too drying. Studio HD Finishing Powder. I thought I really liked this one for a while. Same thing, I can do a light layer of it all over my face and it's okay, but under the eyes, I need to avoid it. It's too drying and it makes the concealer I'm wearing, it makes, you know when powders make your under eyes change color and that's not a good thing because you just spent all that time getting it to the perfect like lightness you wanted it and then you throw a powder on it and it ruins it. That's what this NYX powder did. So, no, no, no. The LA Girl Pro Powder. This was one that I used to be able to bake with. It was the only powder I was able to bake with in the past. And it wouldn't change the color of the under eye and it looked like it looked nice. It stopped working for me this year. It feels comfortable on the face with a very light powdering effect. I can't put it underneath the eyes. My MAC Mineralized Skin Finish, still my favorite powder just to sprinkle all over the face. Obviously, this one's really easy to carry, so I like it for that reason and because it's comfortable and it does the job. Again, um, I can dust it very lightly underneath the eyes, but I, you wouldn't 
bake with this that. anyway. Pleasantly surprised me. I can go a little bit heavier with this powder and it still looks nice and feels nice is the It Cosmetics CC Airbrush Perfecting Powder. So I got this because I'm obsessed with sunscreen. I think it is so and so 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 important to protect your skin and I wanted to have a powder that I could essentially continuously protect my skin with during the day. So I bought this powder and I do love it and I can put it on a few times a day and even with my dry skin it still works and feels the one great. that let me down more than any other powder probably because I have really really high expectations for it was a Scarlet Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I got it in the shade two. They only had three shades, I believe. Um, shade two is medium. And I can lightly powder all over my face. I avoid underneath the eyes. Again, it's too dark for underneath my eyes. Um, it's fine to, to put it all over the face. But it just does nothing special for me. I don't think it's worth the price for me. Um, so this was the biggest disappointment when it comes to powders in 2018. Bronzers, quick and easy. I tried the Too Faced Chocolate Slay. Love it, works perfectly, lasts forever, excellent. I tried the Rimmel Natural Bronzer. This is kind of a shimmery bronzer. Works great, fantastic. It's warm. Do not use it to contour. And my absolute favorite, 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 favorite discovery of 2018 in bronzers. This may have been a 2017 discovery. Not sure. But I just had to rebuy it because I broke mine. I was really sad about it. It is the Bronzer Bronzer from Physicians Formula. It is their... <laughs> Did I say Bronzer Bronzer? That's the shade. The Butter Bronzer from... Um, Physicians Formula, and it's slightly too light for me, but I can build it up, and it gives me a really natural, beautiful warmth to the skin, and it's perfection. It smells amazing. It looks amazing. It stays a long time. This is my favorite all-time bronzer of all time. I am anticipating repurchasing very soon. It's from Kiko Milan. I'm actually running low. Again, it usually takes me a really long time to go through things. This is their Sculpting Touch Creamy Stick Contour in 201. So um, I love this as a contour stick. It works really well. I feel like it's the right shade for me to contour with. Um, and it's really easy and it's very blendable and it never looks too heavy. So for a cream contour stick, I love this thing. I don't know if I'm just not that picky when it comes to bronzers or if all the bronzers I've tried in 2018 were just home runs and that's it. a chunk of blushes. I'm just not a big blush gal, um, so it takes me a while to find what my favorite blush is because usually I just pick up whatever and I'm like, oh, a little color, good enough. But Tarte Blush in the Amazonian Clay Party is the name of it. I believe this came in my gift set for my birthday from Sephora last year. I have hit pan, so I don't know if you can really tell, but I have. And I have used this thing more than I've ever used any blush in my life. I really, really like it. It is, I think, just the perfect shade to give you just a touch of rosiness, but not too much. This one up at Namie's. It's called La Femme. I don't, La Femme Hollywood. It was like in their clearance section. And it's called Pink Velvet. And this thing looks scary bright. I get it. I think when I put it on one of my friends, she was like, oh my god, what are you putting on me? Look at that. <laughs> that was like one little finger swatch. This thing is insane, but I love it. Literally, I take my blush brush and I'm just like, fling, lightest touch in the world, and then I'm like, <laughs> and it's like, bam, done. So I really like this blush. It does the job, it gives you that rosiness. You literally need like a smudgeon of it and it just, it's great. And it lasts a really long time on the face. Highlighters that I loved in 2018. So let's just start with my most used because this thing's insane. So this is my Laura Geller Gilded Honey Highlighter. 
I have never used a highlighter as much as I've used this highlighter in my life. This thing is dreams coming true every second of every day. That is what this highlighter is. It's perfection. It's literally perfection, as Chandler would say. Um, so this is my top highlighter of 2018. I know it did not come out in 2018. It is my top highlighter of 2018. I used this thing all the time. Okay, other highlighters that I loved and they definitely had like their moment this year where I used them for like a month straight. Maybelline's Master Chrome. OMG. This thing, I, I literally got it and I think, oh my God, I've hit pan. I've hit pan in this thing as well. That never happens. Funny, because when they're next to each other, I can tell how much chunkier the Master Chrome is. But when you look at the shades, they're so similar. Anyway, the Master Chrome highlighter, absolutely amazing. Highly recommend it. Automatically, when you feel and swatch this one, it doesn't feel as nice as the Gilded Honey or the Master Chrome. But clearly, I have a type. Can you guys see that? It's up here. So this one, woo! This one isn't as in your face, but it's really nice and it's buildable and it does look really nice on the skin. This is the Wet n Wild Golden Flower Crown. I liked it a lot. I was on the fence about getting forever and ever and ever and I finally like swiped one very last minute before they ran out. Had I known she was gonna bring it out again, have panicked about it, but I totally panicked about it because I wanted it and then I was like, no, 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 don't spend money, don't spend money, don't spend money. And then I didn't get it and then I was like, no, I need it. And then I literally had to hunt it down before everywhere ran out of them. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy Highlighter. I really do have a type, clearly. And this one is brighter and lighter, and I don't know if you can see it, it's here, but it's beautiful and it works really nice. The thing I think about this one that's a negative is that it was overhyped. I would pick my uh, Gilded Honey over it, and I would also pick my um, Champagne Pop from Becca over it. Champagne Pop will probably always be like top two highlighting shades ever. And I just don't have it currently. It broke a while ago. I tried to salvage as much as I could and use it until I couldn't use it anymore. And I haven't repurchased it because I'm being good. Made it to the end. And these probably should have been something I covered at the very beginning, but I didn't. So here we go. Primers. Now, I must mention, because I think it's important, that I'm not a big believer in primer. I just never have been. Um, I think if you're using the right skincare and the right moisturizers, that that kind of primes your skin and you don't need to buy a primer. So please don't hate me if I don't like your primers because I'm not a big fan of primers. So that's that. All right, this is Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. Um, it is a luminous primer, hyaluronic acid, which is really nice on dry skin. And so I really like it because it feels really nice. And I feel like if I lay um, a semi-matte foundation over it, it's still like my face still feels alive enough. Cause I feel like when you look too matte, you just don't look alive. So I do like it. Um, but to be honest, like when I run out, am I going to go repurchase it? No, but I'll use it until I run out. I mean, it's nice enough. Smoothing Primer Forum Tarte. I have played with this um, just in the month of December a lot. I've had it for quite a few months and I tried it at the be I tried it like during summertime and it was okay. Kind of didn't really notice much of a difference. Uh, if you saw my disaster video, you know I will never, ever, ever, ever use this primer with a stick foundation again. Um, but aside from that, honestly, I just don't have much to say about it. Would I repurchase it again? 
No. A L'Oreal Magic Lumi Light Infusion Primer. It feels great. I don't really know if it does anything. I didn't see a difference. Josie Moran uh, Argan Enlightenment Illuminizer. Now this thing, it has some shine to it. Um, and the reason I consider it as a primer is just because I usually mix it with my foundations to get more of a dewy finish. And that's how I use this. And I really like it. Will I be repurchasing it when I run out? Honestly, probably not. Um, it was something I wanted to try and I tried it and it was great and it's not like exceptionally great, it's just great. And I probably won't repurchase. We have so. made it to the end of this video. Thank you all so, so much for watching part two of 2018 best and worst makeup I tried in 2018. Um, as always, it is a pleasure to be here with you all and for have you guys subscribing to my videos, watching me, all that jazz. I truly, 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 truly do appreciate it. Um, I don't post that often, so if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell because it won't get super annoying because I will maybe post once a week. Honestly, sometimes I go a month without posting. So it's nice for you to get notified when I do post. That way you don't miss a video. Yay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, as always, remember to spread love, not hate. And... Mwah.